Hey guys, it's Rosegroom97 here and uh, doing a little more creepypasta here. I got my next story set up here called Aurora.exe and um, I actually haven't read this one yet and uh, so I'll be reading it the first time while I'm reading it to you guys and uh, you know, after I get done reading it, we'll, we'll sit here and I'll critique it, say what I think I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, if I thought it was crap, if I thought it was good, but uh... You know, let's just get right into it. Okay, I just had to tell this to someone. No one appears to listen to me. Those douchebags. The story is infiltrating my head like someone injected it into my brain with a syringe. I'm typing at lightning speed right now, but I, I must find someone who understands me. Okay, here's the deal. It was about five months ago, I was in my neighborhood checking out the people selling the junk at a garage sale. Right now this may, may look like a cr crappy horror movie, you know, the beginning of a crappy horror movie, but I swear, this is what happened. Okay, anyways, I'm sorry I got off subject. Anyways, I was browsing the stuff when I saw this cool stand selling video games. My eyes gazed upon a weird envelope thing. It had Aurora written with a reddish tint of sorts. I felt the round, cold shape of a CD just in loose inside the package. I looked for whoever was selling this. It was a man who looked like the last person you would imagine selling a video game. It was a pale-skinned short man. Very thin and a haircut like an old monk. I asked what he wanted for Aurora. But suddenly, like a thunder just hit the man, he took the envelope from me and ran off to the inside of his house, never to be seen again. I did a quick search on my regular video game store, but the only response they gave me was that it was a very obscure game by some man who hung himself in the mental asylum he was in. I was starting to think that that was a plot of the game, rather than its actual creator's fate. I asked if they sold it, but the only response I got was, no, nobody sells it. Give, give up now. I left the store with a f feeling of discomfort. Suddenly I felt a breeze and a man in a huge jacket ran by me, almost slamming me to the ground. Z. I realized he dropped something. When I saw what it was, I almost felt my internal organs collapsing. It was Aurora. Quickly, I ran home thinking this story just got more interesting. I took the CD from its shaggy package, which was just like the one I found at the garage sale. I inserted it into the slot. And the computer didn't even ask for autorun.exe. The game just started. Like it hardwired itself to my hard drive. The game had a title screen with a single button. Written in the Comic Sans font. It said enter. Reluctantly, I clicked the button. Thinking it would be some telfang crap of some sorts. But as the stage rendered, I was presented to a town from the times of the Bible. I saw many merchants and even Roman legionaries walking around. As I explored the city a bit, I found a floating image that was surprisingly out of place. A picture of a golden crucifix. That's what it was. A picture. Just floating there. When I touched it, it warped me to a location where it shone the most disgusting image I've ever seen. It was Jesus. And the cross, his brain spilling out the top of his head, his bones ripping through his skin, his guts piercing through the belly, spilling acid, blood, and other fluids. The definition of the image is more than any hardware could, man could manage. It looked realistic as hell. I was sickened and about to throw up. Then one of the Roman guards approached me and said these words that would stalk me forever. Is est mystery fortuna. I was mesmerized. Was that some kind of code? After that, an error message appeared, like the ones on windows, saying, Error, closed store. Were they mocking me? Closed store? Were they talking about the store where I always bought my clothing? The next day, I decided to check it out. I decided to take a look at the mannequins. 
I will never forget that horrendous sight. It was the same crucified Jesus I had seen in the game, but fully fleshed and staring at me. Nobody else seemed to have noticed it but me, as nobody would look at it. What happened next was just confusing. I can only remember my head getting heavier and heavier, then me passing out in the middle of the store, and everyone rushing in my assistance. In the middle of the voices, I swear I had seen the same man from the garage sale who whispered. Level 2. I woke up minutes later in my house. How did this happen? Who knew where I lived? Was it the man? I couldn't think about anything else but the game. Level 2. Level 2? Those words echoed in my head like a horrible sonnet. Level 2 was where trouble actually started. It was a huge cave with random ornaments, and actually quite easy to navigate. Often I would see some words written on the walls in a writing, impossible to make out. I reached a small hall which was absolutely empty. The screen flashed many colors for a few seconds, and an amnesia-like zombie appeared, ready to fight me. However, I was weaponless and my fists were my only means of fighting. Obviously, this battle I couldn't have won. And the game proceeded to give me a close-up of my head being chewed to pieces by the zombie. This one, however, was very poorly rendered and had Nintendo 64-like graphics. What was really traumatizing was the message that appeared. Est, est, the story, Fatana. But with an interesting add-on, Murder the unholy or burn in hell. I didn't want to keep doing this, but the game was actually controlling my life now. The next day I would receive the most tragic news. Twelve of my best friends, including my best friend forever, who was who I most cherished in my whole life, had been found dead in their houses. Crucified. Wait a second. Twelve. Like the apostles. Oh damn! I had to keep playing. I had to find level 3. Level 3 presented itself as the last level in the game. And it was a church. What a surprise. I walked up to the altar and a huge light rendered on top of it. And a figure clad in white robes appeared. It showed that stupid phrase. Ist est vestoi fortana and the traditional add-on. Latin Tran is late. Latin Tran is late? Who is Latin Tran? And why is he late? Why do I care that Latin Tran is late? Latin Tran's late. Latin Tran's late. Oh my god, I'm a dumbass. Quickly, I opened the first translator I could find and popped the phrase that had tormented me all this time. Here's what it said. This is your fate. I felt like my heart would come out of my heart. I also tried the meaning of Aurora. Here's what showed up. Heaven. What? Heaven? This is weird. Suddenly, I looked at the screen and a name appeared. Welcome to Heaven, Theodorus Christie. For your holy actions on eliminating the unholy. As the screen finished scrolling, a message appeared. You are next, unholy pagan. My breathing started accelerating, and I searched who this, this Theodorus Christie was. This is what I found. Theodorus Christie is a priest, famous for his mental anxiety inducing game, Aurora, which only had a few copies sold. This game is very unknown and obscure, and the, there is only one copy in the world, location unknown. Theodorus was hospitalized in a mental asylum, in which he hung himself. Word is that people who had played the game as, as 12 of their friends murdered, along with a few hallucinations. Then, if they complete the game, they get murdered right when playing, leaving gibberish on the screen along with some Latin text and no cadaver remains. Then a picture appeared. It was him. 
the man who was dead. The priest. Wait. I hear steps. Oh no. <laughs> Gibberish. Ist. Est. The story. Fortana. The end. Okay, guys. Um. That was Aurora.exe. Um. Very interesting. Different from the ones I've read. And I said I would do a video game one. And. You know, it, I liked how they worked with it, how, um, you know, this was supposedly all done, this guy was writing it all live, it seems like, or how he, he was writing it when this was all happening, which I kind of appreciate and like, but, um, you know, here's another thing with the video games, when I don't like, uh, this is why I don't like reading the video game, uh, creepy pastas, is because, uh, a lot of the video game ones start off with the guy getting the game at some garage sale. The man either gives it to him for free or refuses to give it to him. He finds it on eBay, you know, buys it at GameStop. And I know that's where we get most of our games at, but, you know, I don't hear one where my family bought this for me for Christmas or for my birthday or because I did really good in school. I don't usually hear that much. It's always the same three or four things over and over, and I get kind of annoys me after a while. The, the next thing that really kind of bugs me about this one is, um, there was a line in here that really made no sense to me here, um, about his heart. It felt like his heart was about to burst out of his heart. Now, I, I think that was some, you know, mistype. I think he meant to put, you know, my heart was about to burst out of my chest. Now, I could be wrong about that. He might have really intended for the heart to pop out of his own heart. But, uh, you know, it kind of makes me, takes me out of the moment of the in intensity of the story. Because it's just really bad grammar and you kind of get tongue-tied on it. Now, as you can hear, I get tongue-tied really easy. And, you know, I probably don't got the best talking voice because like I do get really easily stumbled upon words but even most of the time I can still uh, be in the moment of the story this one that ending kind of just pulled me out when well, it was like my heart was about to pop out of its heart and I kind of lost my whole holy crap what's going to happen next but all in all the story was very interesting with how um, a priest actually made the game and it was about Christ and all that, and it dealt with the apostles and a lot of, you know, of Christ to what was actually happening in real life. Um, the realistic manner it had in here, I kind of didn't mind, kind of worked. And how they described Christ on the cro cross uh, with the bones piercing from his skin, organs hanging out, you know, his... Uh, juices from his organs leaking onto the ground you know that I could see that and it you know I put chills down my back thinking about you know this man pinned down to the cross with all his brains spewing all over him and that you know it's just very morbid it kind of puts a disturbing feeling to you that you know this happened to somebody and you know it could have happened to this man who was our savior you know you know, I'm not very religious, I'm not going to lie to you. I believe to the higher being, but I don't believe in God. Uh, you know, I can't really believe in, t in you know, Jesus without proof. I know people say, you know, he, he wants you to b believe in him, your faith. Sadly, I grew up in a life where for me to believe something, there has to be proof about it. You know, you, you don't sit there and go to your fiancé, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, and go, listen... I believe you upon faith and then you know they're cheating on you and you're going to sit there and go no 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 I believe this person is faithful to me and the thing is, is how can you be so blind and sit there and go listen you know I believe in this but there's no proof in it that's you know back to boyfriend girlfriend you, you sit there and you go I think you cheated I know you cheated on me and there was no proof or anything that happened for you to think that. You just assume. You you automatically just believe. I don't like that. 
I don't believe that's right. For me, I grew up in a life where there's proof about it, then you bring it up, you take care of it. There's proof that the person I love was cheating on me, well, you know what, I'm done with that person, there's proof. I am not going to sit there and go, you know, I believe you cheated on me, there's no proof or anything, but I'm dumping you. You know, it's not fair to the other person. You, know, you gotta give them their side in that. You know, evolution has, you know, proof that it's happened. It's been shown that it's actually happened. You know, give me proof of Adam and Eve. Show me, you know, freaking Adam's freaking, like, uh, you know, his come in solid stone or something, you know? But, um, this story, back to the story, you know, how it was a computer game, I don't like how it was supposedly only one game in the world existed. I, I don't like that. But, uh, I don't believe this is true. I think it's total nonsensical bullshit. Still a very interesting story. I still liked it. I don't know about you guys. Tell me if you liked it. Let me know. You know, I like to hear from you. Like to hear. Don't send me an email going, yo, this is what I like. Comment. So other people can comment with you. Okay? Um, another good story. You got another one coming up here, and uh, this one's going to be a very interesting story. I, this one I've been reading and still reading because I want to be sure I got it down 100%. And I will bring it up with you guys, okay? Okay. Now this is RoseGoom97 saying thank you for listening once again and uh, like always, I love you guys and uh, you know, bye! It's RoseGoom97 here guys, uh, as you probably been watching the video. The video went longer than I wanted to, uh, the video game I was playing here is called Evil. It's very good and very creepy as you can tell. And I just wanted it to keep going, I wanted the ending, I wanted you guys to see the complete ending. I only few minutes longer than what I was reading in that. So, uh, you know, enjoy the rest of it, because I really enjoyed it. It scared the shit out of me, in a way. Uh, I'm thinking about doing a live play of it. But right now, I just want you guys to see it. Tell me what you think about it. Tell me if you like to hear me play it live, you know, like, hear my commentary about it, and me spazzing out like a retard. But, um, enjoy it, guys, because I did, and, uh, leave a like. See ya.